welcome to tonight's live and cooking masterclass. Tonight's masterclass is brought to you by Great British Chefs and Vitality, the positively different insurance and investment provider that rewards people for healthy living. Tonight, we're going to share with you an amazing recipe and show you a whole load of incredible stuff. This whole campaign has been brought together in order to inspire you to cook more healthy food at home. And so together with Vitality, we've brought together an amazing group of chefs to create recipes and content to inspire you to cook great food at home. Tonight, we are incredibly lucky to have one of Britain's greatest chefs. In fact, one of the first 12 chefs to join Great British Chefs. He runs two of the best restaurants in Edinburgh. Martin Wishart, thank you for joining us this evening. Good evening, so, what are we cooking this evening? Well, tonight, Ollie, I'm going to show you how to do a fantastic dish. It's uh, stuffed cabbage parcels, which are steamed with a filling of minced beef. We've got some lovely herbs with, uh, flavored with some white onion and, and garlic. So a really nice, simple, healthy dish, something that you could cook, knock up quite easily for a midweek meal or, or you know, a nice Sunday lunch. It's servable as a starter or as a main as well. Brilliant. Well, this is, and this is and it's a great way of us showing, I suppose, how you steam things, how you create stuff. Now listen, we are really lucky here this evening. We've got Martin, you can ask him any question you like. So just fire in the questions, they come winging their way to me. And if you do ask a question, you have a chance of winning a 50 pound gift voucher from Ocado. So ping them through and you get the chance to ask Martin, one of Britain's greatest chefs, how to do whatever you want. So here so, we go. So, so where are we cracking, are we? Let's get cracking. Yeah, so what I have here, basmati rice, long grain rice. And with all long grain rice, you, you really need to rinse that, yep. okay? Wash off the starch. And it's one of the things, isn't it? People are at times a little bit scared about rice, not quite sure, you know, and, and you know, actually it's pretty easy. It's, it is it's straightforward, yeah. It's just a couple of, you know, pick the right rice for the right dish. For this dish, we're looking for a long grain rice. It doesn't go sticky. You've got uh, sort of uh, medium grained rice as well, which is good for things like risotto and then pudding rice for obviously um, um, rice puddings and things like that. Brilliant. Well, look, let's get, let's get going on the Can rice. Can you pass me that large pan, please? There we go. So I'll just strain this off first, this cloudy water. Great. Excellent. And as I said, if you've got any questions, please do just fire them in and we, we can ask Martin away about whether it's cooking techniques, whether it's how you do certain things, how you make the most of ingredients. Excellent. What the point of this, this whole campaign that we're, we're here doing with Vitality is to give you the chance to ask questions to help you understand how you cook great dishes at home. Because ultimately, at the heart of healthy living is learning simple techniques, like how to cook this kind of stuff from scratch, isn't it? Yeah, so all the... With the uh, rice being washed and rinsed off, I've just added some uh, water into there. Basic rule, it's sort of 50% rice, 100% of the water, so double the amount of water. Brilliant. So we've got a quick question in, which is an interesting one. So Lisa um, has just asked the question, what's the benefits, what are the differences between white rice, brown rice, you know, which so, should you use? Yeah, brown rice, it takes longer to cook. Okay. Uh, so a tip there would be you could pre-soak it for longer. Okay. Uh, that, that starts the, the cooking process, softens the, the grains themselves. But long grain rice is even healthier. Uh, that husk on it is really good and healthy for you. Okay. Brilliant. Lisa, thank you very much for that question. That gives you a chance to be entered into the £50 draw for the Ocado voucher. And as I said, it's that easy. Just ask a question. Martin will explain why you do different things in different ways. So, we've got the yeah. rice on. What next? Well, basically, the flavourings here. So, what I have here on my board, we've got some lovely white onion. Uh, some garlic cloves which we've peeled, some beautiful sage, adds a really nice flavour into the, to the dish itself, and then some thyme as well. So lots of nice fresh flavours going into the And simple the ingredients filling. that you can get from any supermarket anywhere, and in fact, that, you could even grow your own. That's right, and that's the basis of this dish. Yeah. It's something that you can knock up really quickly, but the ingredients you can find very easily. Yeah. Great, so this is where you can demonstrate your amazing cutting skills and, and show that you know you can just, this, it's yeah. this easy. Little tip, just keep the root of the onion attached. Cut the onion in half. Now, make, you make it look so easy. There's no need to dice the onion really fine. You can keep it nice and rustic. So, chop up the onion. So great, we've got a question from Jay Ann about rice alternative. So in this dish, we're bringing together onions and garlic and rice and, and mint and then putting that inside a cabbage leaf. So if you didn't want to use rice for whatever reason, 
Could you substitute it out with something? Yes, you could. Yes, you could, uh, you know, a little more delicate, but you could use spinach, a few leaves yeah. of that. That would capture or leeks as well. Leeks are very good. You strip them, open them up, keeping them whole, and then give them a wash, blanch them in some water, and then use that as your casing. Brilliant. Great. Excellent. Thank you very much for that question. Just keep them coming in. Martin will answer whatever questions. So, Martin, just a little bit so people know a bit more about you. So, you've been running a restaurant in Edinburgh for almost 20 years. That's, That's right. Yeah. So, my, my restaurant I opened in 99, which is 20 years next year. Uh, we were the first restaurant in Edinburgh to receive a Michelin star, which was uh, 12, just after, 12 months after we opened, which was uh, a wow. great accolade. That's pretty serious. And also, actually, when you opened up in, in Leith, you were, I mean, it was quite a radical place to open up a serious restaurant, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, you know, I, I, I was attracted because it's right on the waterfront. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lovely old port. It's a beautiful location. Yeah, it is a great location. It was a small building and it was affordable for me at the time. Um, yeah. But you know, what, what I really... I, I'm sure that the, the Bring Your Mission star to that part of Edinburgh made, made, made the area kind of even more desirable and, and you know, where it, people want to be. It did. I mean, it was a small venue at the time. It was yeah. just uh, 30 seats, 10 tables, um, you know, one door in, one door out, small kitchen. But it was really the nucleus of my start of my career there as a, as a restaurateur. Brilliant. So, uh, so we've got the pan. butter on, haven't yep. we? Just want to warm the pan up. Yeah. Little tablespoon of half tablespoon of butter in there, and then in with the the so garlic a, and the onions. There's a great question here from Jeff about: Do you prefer cooking for kind of awards for the kind of showy, you know? Because obviously you run a you know a major Michelin star kitchen. You've also got three children. Um, you run a second restaurant, which is, I'm going to say, more sort of laid back and more of a bistro style. Where's, where, you know, where, where, what do you get the most pleasure from? Is it that kind of performance cooking or is it actually that kind of more family focus? Well, my career, Ollie, I've, I've, I've worked in lots of great restaurants from three star Michelin down to like big brasseries to, you know, simple, wholesome cooking and small uh, back street restaurants. Yeah. But I, I, I enjoy all styles of cookery, uh, particularly, you know, teaching from my cook school, uh, family meals, as well as high-end cooking from, from my restaurant. So, and the principles are the same. I mean, one of the whole points of, of, of what we're trying to do tonight, and this is the reason why, you know, it's a great question, Jeff, why we work with chefs like Martin, is that actually, you know, people like Martin genuinely know how to get the best out of ingredients, how to make the most out of a dish. And even though actually this is a really, really simple dish with a really small number of ingredients that's super healthy, actually, it's all based upon good, solid foundations of how to cook, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, Ollie. It's just taking the right steps, taking the time to, you know, buy, source the good ingredients that you're going to be working with, uh, and just uh, taking your time preparing them, and, and really enjoying your, you know, putting the dish together. What, I've, what I'm doing here just now is I've taken some fresh thyme leaves, taken them off the branch, added them into the, the onion, right. and we'll just let that, that's already Go good to go. Just so finish with a little salt. There was a great question here from Alessandro, which actually, I mean, it's an interesting one, which is um, salted butter, unsalted butter. What's the, you know? I, well, I like to use unsalted in the kitchen. I, I prefer to add the salt as and when I think I need it. And for the table, both. Yeah. For the dining table, you know, salted, unsalted, it's personal preference. Yeah. But for cooking, You've I... You've got I, the control, yeah, haven't you? If yeah, you go exactly. with unsalted butter, you then choose the amount of salt that goes into the That's right, yeah. So the rice, once it's boiled, it's, it's been cooking there for about six minutes, needs yep. another four minutes, and then we'll take that off. Um, next, we've got the cabbage here. We've got the cabbage. Now, this is one of those interesting ones, which is you know, one of the things that we're really trying to do in this campaign with Vitality is inspire people to think a bit more differently about veg. And yeah. I think there's a big revolution going on in Britain at the moment in terms of people wanting to eat less meat, eat more veg, but also get more creative. So, What's the veg you've chosen? Why? Why? What, what are we looking at here? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously a cabbage. This is a variety of savoy cabbage, which is, you know, very common in the winter time. It's a, more of a rustic cabbage. Um, can, you can braise this really easily. Holds up to a lot of strong flavours added to it, like uh, bacon and garlic and shallots and thyme. Um, but equally, it's also very good when you just break it up roughly, yeah. boil it, and then finish it with a bit of butter and some fresh sage. 
Because it's interesting, so Vanessa has just asked a question about alternatives to cabbage. And before you answer the question, it's one of those things that actually, in some ways, cabbage has in some ways got a bad name because 20 years ago, the, the preferred method of serving cabbage was to boil it. To boil it, And yeah. that was it. That's right, and it yeah. Was, yeah. I mean, it tastes pretty flat. Yeah, it does. And I think, that, you know, boiling cabbage is fine, but it's just boiling it for the right length of time, just so it's tender. Take it off, refresh it run it under some cold water if you're not going to serve it straight away. It's, it's equally delicious with some fresh olive oil over the top yeah. and some nice salt, rock salt, keeping it simple. And so for Vanessa's question of like, you know, alternatives to, to, to Savoy cabbage, if you want to make this dish differently without cabbage, what yeah. other veg could you use in terms of wrapping? Leek would be a good one. Uh, you'd split the leek, take off the dark green leaves because they're kind of bitter, uh, split the, the leek in half, halfway down, and then open it up and cut into sections about the length of that piece of cabbage yep. and use that as your skin to wrap the parcel. Spinach, you could use that spinach, as well. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, perhaps a uh, cost lettuce as well. You know, they're a little more delicate, these leaves, but they will work if you take your time. Brilliant. Okay, so, so we've got the cabbage. Yeah, Ollie, basically, you'd, I've already cooked these, but what I did was take off any and of these. Just, just so, so, so you, you steam these or you boil these, bo these in water? Boiled them in, in salted water, yeah. Great. So just take, discard any of the older leaves or discoloured leaves and then use these nice green leaves. Uh, they've been washed, cooked. That's cooked for around two or three minutes. And a little tip, if you use a cocktail stick or the point of a knife, small knife, it's just pierced here in the stem. And if that's tender, then your cabbage is perfectly cooked. Okay. Yeah. okay. So over to the rice. That now needs to uh, be strained. Have you got a sieve there, please? Yep. So I just strain that off. Great. So I mean, this is a, this is a really simple dish, isn't it? In the sense that we've got you know basic ingredients, you know, you. I'm using you. you know stuff that we would have in in our store cupboard. But obviously, you can play with that in different ways. If you want to bring different flavours in and things, you can bring in other herbs, other spices. Definitely, yes. You could add, you know, if you you could use minced lamb, you could use uh, fish as your base as well. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's whatever you want to use as your stuffing, it's, it's entirely up to you. The cabbage is just the casing for it. Brilliant. Can I just, uh, yep. you've got the minced beef the mince? there. Yeah. yeah, so actually Hayley just asked that question about you know, what different types of meat. So you're saying lamb, you, 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 you could use pork. Pork, um, yeah. But I think, and if you wanted to do a veg alternative and not use any, you know, any meat at all. Yeah, you could use lentils as a yeah. base. You could, crush, you could crush them up lightly with a fork. And uh, you know, you've got your egg to hold that together as well. So, and if you're not using, uh, you'll see later in the stock, the uh, stock that I'm using is a little bit of chicken stock into the tomato ragu. So actually lots of questions about rice and stuff. And someone was saying, when you cook the rice, Take the onions, you got the onions, yeah. um, you didn't cover it. So is, is there a need when you're, when you're cooking the rice, you know, you talked about, you rinse it, you, you get rid of all the starch, you then put it, it in, in with water. No, it is a good idea to cover the rice with a tight fitting lid, um, simply didn't have one. There you go. You see, so, what's what's great? Like, what's great about this world of, of you know of working with with people who are passionate about food is they spot things when there are little kind of anomalies where where there aren't kind of you know the pan the tops that we need them. So we have a top here, but we didn't have a top there. So thanks again for that question. Um, and obviously, if you want to ask a question, just fire fire it in. So Martin, I need to ask you about um, you went on a crazy mission the other day, fourteen thousand miles in a boat. Yes. Well, well tell, tell me about that. Well, sure, uh, you, know, you, you, you know, kitchens are claustrophobic enough. Yeah. Without, you know. Well, it's a passion of mine outside of the kitchen is uh, sailing. So, yeah, I, I'm lucky enough to have a boat myself. And uh, I, I kept that in Edinburgh for the past five, six years. Uh, various trips over and up to Shetland and over to Denmark uh, with a crew. And I just felt it was time, you know, with the family that we'd move it. And we decided to move it down to Cartagena. So it's one of those questions which, I mean, you know, a man with your kind of culinary background, cooked in major Michelin three-star restaurants, run your own Michelin-star restaurant, all that. What does a man with your culinary background cook on a boat? I mean, I'm sure you're not there with sort of, you know, dried biscuits and, and you know, and the odd fish. Well, when you're, dried fish. When you're uh, non-stop 24 hours out at sea and, uh, you know, you're doing crew changes and, you know, your diets, you're wanting something... The, the, the diet changed because you're leaving Edinburgh in the cold in, in May and you're arriving down in the Med. So the, the menu kind of changed as we got warmer. 
But we started off with that. You, you started at whiskey and you end up at kind of <laughs> cold, cold. Lots of braised dishes <laughs> up, up uh, from the North Sea through the English Channel. Yeah. And then the cold sliced meats came out and tomato salads and things like that. But so, and and any, any sort of things you've discovered, like is there anything that you can make on a boat that actually works yep. particularly well? Yeah, fresh bread. Fresh bread. Fresh bread, yes. So. I mean, most people find it hard enough to make fresh bread at home, but you're, you're taking things another level. You're on a boat in the middle of the ocean, sea, and, and you're making fresh bread. How does that work? Well, obviously, you need to have the correct flour. So we have uh, bread flour, T55, which is a French flour, and then we have fresh yeast, uh, and obviously the water and salt. So we'd, we'd make the, the bread dough in the morning, make that on the, out in the cabin on the wooden table. We take turns of making that. And then uh, proving it, it was in the engine bay. So covered with a damp tea towel into the engine bay. It's the perfect temperature to prove. And, uh, you know, 45 minutes to an hour later, it's ready to go into the oven. Brilliant, I love it. Well, we're at 15 minutes, so um, we we'll fire on the, um, the oven. I mean, look, you know, this is, this is what's kind of amazing is, is that, you know, you're not even restricted by the fact you're on a boat. You're, you're sort of, you know, knocking up bread in, in, in yeah. the middle of the ocean. So, so now we're back on land. What should we be doing so now? So while What's we've been chatting about the boat adventure, yeah. uh, I've taken the mince. I've added one egg, cracked that into there. I've seasoned the mince with some uh, rock salt and some black pepper, crushed black pepper. Added the sauteed onion, garlic, and herb that was in there at the time. And next, we've got the cooked rice. That goes into here as well. Great. It's a great question here from Ali. And again, this is one of those things where about, you know, with healthy dishes and, and trying to create um, different flavour profiles and something, could you use um, minced chicken rather than beef? Or is there something about beef that actually particularly makes this dish work? So thank you very much, Ali, for the question. Uh, I think it's, Ali, it's a good question, but I think it's just simply because minced beef's easily available in yeah. the supermarket. You can pick up a packet from your butcher, uh, from the supermarket. It's, it's there, or minced lamb. Uh, but yes, you could use minced chicken. Yeah. And again, I think this is one of the points about these kind of dishes, isn't it, Martin? Which is actually, once you've cooked it, once you understand the dish, I think one gains the confidence to start to find different ways to play with the dish, can't you? I That's mean, in correct. In the sense that, you know, what we're doing today, you know, is, is quite a simple dish. You can change all the different ingredients. Yes. So you've got the knife again. What's happened? What, so what are so we doing the, the these cooked cabbage leaves, we cut out the, the stock. Of that. And these are going to be used to wrap, this is the casing to wrap the uh, stuffing with. Great. So it's a good question. And I think it's one of those things which is like, we all live, you know, busy lifestyles. Um, there's never enough time. And Amanda's asked a question, which I think is one of those ones that a lot of people worry about and think about, which is, you know, actually preparing stuff in advance. So the question is, can you freeze this dish? Is there, you know, how, or, or and how could you, you know, sort of prepare this in advance if, if freezing doesn't work? Well, Amanda, yes, you could freeze the dish. Certainly, but it is always better to prepare it and cook it the same day. Uh, but it, once you've uh, secured your parcels, you can put them in a, in a clean container and freeze that, yes, and take them out and defrost them. Great. Thank you very much, Amanda, for that question. Again, keep the questions coming in. You can ask Martin about any, any cooking process. So, Ollie, uh, what I'm going to do now is take... Now you've laid these down a particular way, haven't you, in order to yeah, try and... Yeah, you spotted that. So, yeah, so you can see here that the veins of the cabbage, I'm going to use that, this side, for the presentation side. So that's going to be what you'll see when the dish is finished, as opposed to that. That's just... And, and this is always, I always think, one of the... What, this, exactly, this is the chef -y part of it, which is, you know, actually, it wouldn't necessarily make much difference which side you did it. Yeah, but well, I think this is one of the things that... Actually, we do eat with our eyes, don't we? And we yeah. do live in a world where people like to share the food they photographed on Instagram and, and you know, trying to get kids to eat things. You want it all to look as appetizing as possible. So that kind of tip, I think, you know, helps people be really kind of, you know, create food that makes a real difference, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, every, a lot of ingredients do have a better side that you present on it, fish in particular. There's, you know, there's always a, one side that would look better on the plate when it's cooked than on another. So I take these parcels. As you see, Ollie, I'm just rolling them up. Pop them in the steamer. Yeah, so the, a little tip with the steamer. If you've not got one, then you can get these uh, bamboo ones. I don't know if you've yep. seen them. And pan selection. Well, really, measure the, the diameter of your pan and then go and buy the, the basket after. 
And if it's uh, a little loose fitting, then use some tin foil that you can wrap around as a collar so and that'll secure it. So you can turn just a basic pan into a steamer with yeah. just a bit of um, tin foil and stuff. So Jan's asked a quick question, which I think is really interesting because there's a lot of talk about salt. And I think we all know that there are different types of salt. So why, why have you picked rock salt? What's the difference between regular table salt, rock salt, and then also um, the sort of flaked salt as well, isn't there? Yeah, well, some of the table salts, they've got a chemical in them. Uh, the, the rock salt's pure. This is a Malden one that I'm using. And uh, you know, I, I think the flavor from that type of salt is just is much better. Yeah. And that's why I would use to finish meats on or fish once they're cooked and a little bit of salt on the top. And table salt for boiling vegetables when you're cooking in water. It's pretty, and this is, this is one of those things, Jan, thank you very much for that question. This is one of those things I think that, can, that people are more and more kind of trying to understand about, which is ultimately when you are cooking stuff from scratch, as we are here, you are in control, and it's back to that question that was asked about butter with salt in it versus butter without, is you are in control of the seasoning you're putting in, you know, the things that are more healthy, less healthy. You are in control of the entire recipe, and you can dial stuff up or down depending upon your health requirements. Yes, that's right. So you've got, as you're saying there, you can, if someone in your family or one of your friends is, um, doesn't want any salt at all, just make a portion aside and don't season it. So there's a great question here from Nihar, and actually in some ways it's one of the things that you know, we're keen to, to show today, um, is about what's the benefits of steaming versus other forms of, of, of cooking? So thank you, Nihar, for the question. So once again, what are the benefits of, of steaming versus, for example, pan frying or, or other things? Well, Nihar, the, the obvious one, I think, is it's very healthy uh, for you because there's no fat involved at all. Uh, it's a very clean, pure way of cooking as well. So steaming fish, you really get the pure flavour of the fillet of the fish that you're steaming. Uh, it's also very, it's, it's, it's a very easy method to use as well. It's, you only need a tabletop steamer and uh, you're off. Yeah, so, it, and so in the end, you're actually cooking in a cleaner, purer way. Yeah, that's right. Brilliant. Yeah. Nihal, thank you very much for you the can, question. And of, Great one question. thing we haven't touched on is you can add flavourings into the, into the water. So you could put ginger in there, lemongrass, which just gives a, a flavour to the steam as well, which will impregnate into the whatever you're cooking. Brilliant. And so makes your kitchen so, so you can actually throw in different um, aromats and stuff into that's the water and you will get that infusion into, yeah, that's correct, into the yeah. flavour. Great tip. So, Ollie, right. I'm just going to jump over onto the, the, the tomato ragu. Great. Should you put that there? Thank you. So, again, we've got our base for this sauce, um, onion, some garlic. So there's a great question here from Julie about um, how you could do this dish vegan. Um, and there's a lot of talk about, about veganism at the moment, you know, actually people are trying to, whether they're vegans or not, more and more people are eating vegan dishes and, you know, and doing that for, for health reasons. So what are the twists you could make in order to make this a, a, a vegan dish? Okay, so the first one, the cabbage is fine. The, it's obviously the filling that you're going to use. Yep. Um, you'd leave the egg out. Yep. You'd use uh, perhaps something like lentils. You could use um, a mashed vegetable with that, like potato. That would help secure it as well, hold it together. And then all the, all the herbs that you can add to that, some spices if you wanted to as well. But I think lentils are very good as a kind of uh, way of carrying flavours um, with, with, with other spices added to them. Brilliant. Brilliant question. Thank you very much for that question of veganism. I think it's really interesting because actually it's one of those ones that's interesting that more and more people are really taking control of what they're yeah, eating well, and, are, and are following more specific diets. And, yeah, we, we mean, that's, you, know, you must get that a lot in, in the restaurant. We do, and I was just going to say, Ollie, that we offer up to an eight-course tasting menu for vegans. Do you? Yes. Uh, so that's interesting. So you've got an eight-course tasting menu specifically for vegans, and is that something that is, you, you put on the, on the, in the restaurant recently? Uh, it's, it's, if somebody requests a vegan meal, then it's there for them. But it's not, it's not actually... We have a an eight-course and six-course vegetarian menu. And if uh, a vegan books and they want to come in and have a, a, an eight-course tasting menu, we can do that for them. Brilliant. So there's a great question here from Georgina, which I'm sure will be very close to your heart, which is, you know, if you were serving this dish to two hungry boys, you know, how would you beef it up to, to, to keep them quiet? Or, do, or, does, or does, it, does, it, does it not need? Does, you know, I, I, do you, is this going to keep them quiet? In what sense? When they're eating it well, or when they're making it? When they're eating it. That, no, is, is it going to be enough? How, you know, is it enough food? I, mean, I suppose, you know, there is rice, there is mince. Well, it's not... It, 
Yeah, there's, it's, it's all natural ingredients. There's the good amount of protein in there as yeah. well, and the rice is, is filling too. So I think for two young lads eating this, I would think double the portion, maybe four double balls each. Double the portions, there you go. There's the answer. Double the portions and make sure that they um, they eat that. Thank you very much for that question. Once again, if you do fire on a question, whether it gets asked or not, you get entered into the draw to win £50 Ricardo voucher. And you can get to find out, you know, Martin's top tips for keeping hungry boys at bay. So, Ollie, my choice here, tomato-wise, at this time of year is tinned tomatoes. I think if I was doing this dish in the height of summer, I'd be using some fresh plum tomatoes. Um, but... You know, tinned tomatoes are perfectly fine. And you get the consistency, don't you? I mean, in the sense you know yeah. they have a certain quality. Yes, that's right, yeah. So in they go on top of the onions and the garlic. Add a bay leaf into there. And it's you've just thrown in a, an, an, extra, an extra leaf just to add that extra kind of yeah. flavouring. Yeah, and then just a small amount of salt just now. Little pinch of pepper. Brilliant, yeah. And we're using rock salt again and salt just to add that flavour. Yeah. Great. And this is a really interesting thing because I think, you know, again, back to that thing about healthy cooking, which is actually all we've got in here is onions, garlic, and a tin of tomatoes. And that's a base for any pasta, tomato based pasta sauce, isn't it? Yeah. And one thing that I haven't put in there, which is very good as, a, as a, an enhancer for tomato, for a tomato sauce like this, would be a gastric. So that's a combination of sugar and vinegar. 50-50, um, you bring that up to the boil and then you add a small amount of that into, you know, it gives that acidity and sweetness. You can add more to your tomato if it's needed. Brilliant, brilliant, very good tip. An interesting question about the tomatoes. So um, Kay um, just um, asked about when you put the tomatoes in, would you drain them or do you, you keep all the juice and everything? Um? Well, Kay, these ones were already chopped. Uh, yeah. If they were whole tomatoes, I'd probably strain the juice off. Right, so if it's chopped tomatoes, you'd yeah. use the whole... But again, you, you know, you can get good quality tinned tomatoes and you can get ones that are maybe not quite so nice. Yeah, I mean, it's worth... And again, this is the point. I mean, actually, all of these ingredients are very simple, everyday ingredients and the kind of stuff that, you know, yeah. one can get... Well, I, mean, all year I have round. to point out, this is sort of dish I would cook at home with my family, with my children. Uh, it's, it's a great dish to get them involved, especially when you roll in the parcels, get them around the table, get the sleeves rolled up, wash the hands, make the parcels and then you know you take over cook it for them that way i think you're more guaranteed that they're going to taste the dish at least and probably enjoy it a lot Brilliant. more well again there's another question that cinder's brought up which i know on the basis that you've spent a certain amount of time in mexico and in, in and in various parts of the world where there's a certain love affair with spicy food um cinder's question was how would you kind of you know if you wanted to bring that spice and that heat in let's say the spice of the caribbean yeah. how would you do that with this with this kind of dish? into this dish yeah i think the the I think the best one here would be a, a nice chili. Yeah. Something maybe a, a, a Scotch slightly bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a maybe something a little lighter. A little lighter. That. Maybe something with a, a slight smokiness to it. Yeah. That would that would really. Which actually is sort of Mexican. Yeah, that would yeah. work really well. Um, yeah, I think chili, or you know, you could go with uh, other spices as well. You yeah. could put some lighter Indian spices in there if you wanted to. Again, this is the, thank you, thank you very much for that question, Cinder. Much appreciated. Again, that's all we need to do, just fire in a question and we will, we will ask Martin. The, the, this base of this dish has its roots uh, sort of anchored down in classic French cuisine with the cabbage. I mean, a choux farci, so choux being cabbage and the farci. Uh, that would predominantly be a pork-based uh, yep. meat that you'd use, uh, but we've, I've changed that and we've, we've changed that to minced beef. Interesting. It, well... It's a very simple dish and actually, you know, an incredibly healthy yeah. dish as well, isn't it? So we're steaming those away. We've got the tomato sauce cooking and yeah, now we're sort I of moving we're towards... We're good to uh, assemble this dish to go into the oven. Brilliant. So I don't know if you, if you can see here that the cabbage parcels, the, the stuffing's firmed up. Yeah, because when you put it in, actually, the, the, obviously, because the, you've got the rice and the mince, it's loose, isn't it? Yeah. It's actually, but by the time you've got it there, it's actually like a sort of tight yeah that's right block isn't it yeah and one thing i don't think we've mentioned is the quality of the mince that we're using so chuck the cut from the shoulder of the beef uh, shoulder beef is a uh, good quality for mince and something that's quite lean you don't want too much fat in it yeah so it's a lean mince that you yeah know, if you're using uh, mince go with a lean mince that's right yeah brilliant 
Excellent. So we're just putting these in, 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 into the pan in order to just basically finish them off in the oven? That's right. So the sauce will go in around that. And that's as good. Great. So Great. And the sauce has just cooked down a bit, hasn't it? Yeah. Has it been, I mean, that's it's only been on for literally less than five minutes. Exactly. Chin, uh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, chopped tomatoes yeah. are probably better for this dish rather than having whole ones. There's a lot more juice in them. Yeah. Watery juice. Yeah. So you just spin this around. So at this point, you could cool this tomato ragu and uh, freeze it down and use it, you know, Make, it, make a larger pan of it. Because in the end, this is, just, that's a, this is a classic building block ingredient, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Actually, in a lots of other dishes. Yeah, just, uh, you know, you're, you're, you've gone to the point of starting it, so if you wanted to make, you know, double the amount, triple the amount, you know, you've got excess there for another day. Brilliant. Great. And all we now do is, is, is put, that, um, put that in the oven. Yep. And, um, and, then, um, and then we're going to... The good news is we've, we've prepared one earlier because you don't want to sit around waiting while we kind of, you know, magically, um, you know, pull things out of the oven. So we, we've pre-cooked one. And, and this is... So, as, you know, this is, this, is, this is the mastery of, of live cooking, which is here's one we prepared earlier. Um, yeah. We've had a lot more time from we this have, We have, we yes. have. And, and, this, and what's it, so what, basically what you can see from, where, from the cabbage before is it's, you know, they've crisped up a little bit on the top, haven't they? Yeah, just... So this has been in the oven 15 minutes, yeah. around 180, 200, and there's nothing been brushed on top of the leaves. We've just let the cabbage and the tomato sauce just do its own thing in the oven. Brilliant. Um, Great. Light bit of colouring on top of the leaves, and you've got that, you know, the smell is just amazing. Yeah, it looks amazing, doesn't it? Well, I'll tell you what, I think, I think we, we, we need to probably tuck into this. Um, but, I mean, it's just, this is just one of those great examples of a dish that's simple ingredients... Yeah. You know, we, we're steaming it, we're not cooking it, we, you know, lots of, you know, oil and stuff. It's healthy and it's malleable. There's, like, flexibility to play with this, this dish differently. Definitely, which is, yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Well, listen, um, I think while, while we tuck into this, um, we can leave you um, with, with some more amazing recipes from Martin. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. There are loads more recipes on greatbritishchefs.com forward slash vitality. Amazing healthy recipes that will help you cook incredible dishes at home and also on the Vitality online magazine. So please do go there to be inspired to create some amazing recipes. Thank you for joining us. And now there's another amazing sea bream recipe from Martin that you can watch. Thanks so much for joining you. And Martin, thank you for Pleasure. coming. Pleasure. Thank you for having me, Emily. Thank you. Brilliant. Nine, nine. Let's try this. Yeah. Hello, I'm Martin Wishart, chef owner of Restaurant Martin Wishart in Leith, Edinburgh. And today I'll be making a beautifully steamed sea bream, which I'm going to serve with some spiced coconut sauce and jasmine rice. Steaming is a common technique used in Southeast Asian cuisine. It's simple, healthy, and the best method to guarantee vibrant ingredients and clean flavors. Okay, so now I'm gonna start this recipe by making this lovely coconut sauce. First, I'm gonna take some garlic and uh, just slice a clove nice and fine. And also a nice red chili pepper. Okay, so I place a, a medium-sized saucepan over a moderate heat, add about a teaspoon of oil, and then into the pan, we add the sliced garlic and chopped chili. Here I have some shallot, I have some nice uh, root ginger here that's been peeled. I also have a couple of lime leaves that go in as well. And we just want to sweat this off for around about a minute, just get all these nice, lovely flavors coming through. Okay, so next I'm gonna add a pinch of ground cumin into the pan. After we've got in the jug here some coconut milk. Add that to the pan, and then you just gently want to simmer this for two or three minutes. Now the coconut milk's come up to a simmer, we're gonna add some fish sauce, a teaspoon, and here I've got some palm sugar. And just give this a stir. We're gonna leave this to cook for approximately five to ten minutes. Let all these flavours infuse into the coconut milk. Okay, so last we're just going to zest some fresh lime. We add a, a teaspoon of the juice as well. And to finish, we've got some fresh coriander leaves. It's important to add the, the lime and the coriander at the very end. It keeps all the fresh, vibrant flavours into the sauce. You really just want to 
bring that up, let it simmer for 30 seconds, and then take the pan off the heat, and that's the sauce ready. Okay, and now we're going to steam the sea bream. Steaming is a very gentle cooking process which allows the ingredients' natural flavours to really shine through. I'm using sea bream, but you can try this technique with any other fish, such as cod, salmon or haddock, as well as vegetables. So I just want to lightly season with a little salt on both sides. And place it in the steamer, skin side facing up. A tight fitting lid on top. And I'm going to allow that to cook for around six to eight minutes. Okay, so that's the fish now I've been steaming for around six to eight minutes and it's ready to come out. So it's really handy to use a, a nice wide base spatula to lift the fish out, put it onto a clean plate. So that's the sea bream cooked. And as you can see, the flesh is nice and succulent. It's got a lovely sheen to it as well, and it smells delicious. And now we're going to plate up the dish. And there you have it, a really simple and healthy steamed sea bream dish served with spicy coconut sauce and jasmine rice. Thank you all for watching. You can find more delicious and healthy recipes at greatbritishchefs.com and at the Vitality Online Magazine.